Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this and that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a very, 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 very <laughs> terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. You are watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Nigeria must be home to all of its citizens, or it isn't home at all. So I'll be talking about shelter for all Nigerians. Is it a right or a mirage? Housing, often interchangeably called shelter, is an indispensable human need. Shelter is essential not only for the protection from the elements, but also for privacy, sanctity of family life, health, and emotional well-being. In short, to our fundamental dignity as human beings. Recognizing the central importance of shelter to human existence, Section 16, sub 2 of the 1999 Constitution provides as follows. The state shall direct its policy towards ensuring that the material resources of the nation are harnessed and distributed as best as possible to serve the common good, and that adequate and suitable shelter, suitable and adequate food, reasonable national minimum living wage, old care, Old age care and pensions, employment, sick benefits, welfare of the disabled are provided for all citizens. But today, the housing deficit in Nigeria is currently estimated at 20, 17 to 20 million housing units, increasing annually by 900,000 units, with a potential cost of 60 trillion naira needed to fill this gap. Lagos State alone has a deficit of about 3 million housing units. Because adequate shelter is still a mirage to many residents of a mega city like Lagos, especially those on low incomes or the very poor, they resort to seeking a roof over their head anyhow and anywhere space avails. The result is that from the initial 42 slums identified in Lagos in the mid 80s, the number has now skyrocketed to over 100 slum communities and still counting. It's not a surprise that the World Bank reports that two out of three people in Lagos live in slums. So how are states responding to the proliferation of slums? Are they building more homes that are affordable, affordable to the masses and within the reach of the most vulnerable and those in critical need of shelter? On what and what are, are states spending the huge budgets appropriated every year for the benefits of citizens? On the contrary, rather, Unplanned settlements are under siege, as arbitrary forced evictions are routinely carried out using several headings and excuses, such as crime control, city beautification, flood management, gutter constructions, setback enforcement, and so forth, displacing hundreds of thousands of people annually. Minimum wage in Nigeria today is about 18,000 naira or 30,000 naira, depending on the state you live in. Landlords also require upwards of one to two years' rent at once. So if you're earning 30K, 30,000, you need at least 16 to 24 months to save one year rent. Yet, government issues notices for just seven days before they evict communities. As evidenced by research findings, official emphasis is being placed on buildings and other public structures that neither contribute to the state's housing stock or not tackle affordability crisis in the state. Therefore, it is safe to conclude that the provision of affordable shelter is not among the priorities, top priorities of states. There are council flats in London. There are cooperative houses in Germany. There are social housing flats in South Africa. We also used to have what they call hotel dollar homes. These are different models adopted by various countries to ensure that citizens, especially the poor among them, live in dignity and have decent shelter. Are these ideas alien to Nigeria? Are these pro people models impossible to replicate here in Nigeria? I urge every one of you watching this show to join us in appealing to the federal and state government to make housing 
For all, a top priority towards the realization of the Sustainable Development Goal 11, which is to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. It is indeed possible for the hope of decent shelter to move from a mere mirage to full possibility. That hope is realizable. I mean, it's not only possible, it's absolutely necessary. You know, yeah. We don't really have a choice. I feel sick to the stomach when I hear <laughs> this kind of thing. Honestly, I do. Because when I drive down the road, there's no day I don't drive past someone sleeping. Today, I drove past someone sleeping on the middle road on Ozumban Badi Way, mm. on the hard concrete. You know, and then yesterday, I drove past someone in the rain with something like tarpaulin, just sitting by some rubbish. I'm thinking, is this a human being? And we don't seem to understand that if you neglect, like what you said at the beginning, if it's not home to all, then it's not home at all. If you neglect the least, if the weakest people are being left and you continue to just, because you said, what are they spending the money on? And you, you, know, you had research, which you know, maybe you'll table if we have time, you know, to show that they're spending money on themselves. The, the, the government are spending money beautifying them, their own housing when they have money allocated to spend on the citizens. And they don't seem to understand that if you let these poor people, if you neglect the welfare of the poor, then eventually it's going to come back to, to haunt you. You know, um, I, we, only yesterday I was hearing the story of um, a guy who did um, the virtual story in, in Chibok, you know, Daughters of Chibok. And when he tells you how this, these Chibok people have been neglected since the, the furor, they're there. They haven't had any post-therapy trauma, anything. So 33 parents have died as a result of the trauma they faced from losing their children. The lady who was narrating the story is still waiting for her daughter to come back. She's still washing her clothes and folding her clothes. They don't have manure, even for the groundnut farming they're doing. So it's like, like they're forgotten, deserted people, and we seem to think it's their problem. Is it their problem? Is it the problem of these people that you're neglecting them to the point where they don't have any sustenance? What do you really want them to do? And, you know, so something must be done. That's why I say I feel sick to the stomach, because we can't afford to neglect one in, you know, two out of three people living in slums. I mean, that's crazy. That's really crazy. I, I, think, I think government is overwhelmed. By, are they overwhelmed? They, They're they busy must, building they must, their own houses. They are they overwhelmed? They yeah, they They're must be because if you look at the, the uh, magnitude of problem, we're talking health care, no, no. we're They're talking education. They're still caring education. for themselves. Sorry, it's not overwhelmed. But for this, my own uh, take on this is, you know, we might have to rethink our policy on housing. And I would want to take it back to education. You know, do we really have to depend on, you know, the traditional way of building? Can we start to research, you know, cheaper and, you know, environmentally friendly methods. What she was saying. You know, yeah. that would help, you know, boost uh, mass production. Houses that are less than two million, three million naira. You know, th those are the kind of things that we need to challenge in higher institutions. Yeah, give an account. But these are initiatives that must be driven by, you know, uh, Policy, yes. yeah. I, I think that, um, you know, um, I agree with Seydou that um, alternative um, models of building mass housing has to be faced. It doesn't have to be those huge block of flats. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, we can find alternative methods, uh, you know, in building, and, uh, and that's very critical. But on a larger picture um, that I worry about is this absence of care. Mm -hmm. That and I don't think government is overwhelmed. No, I, thank I, you. I, 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 because they're managing to do no, what I, they need I, to do I, for I totally themselves. I totally disagree with that. Government <laughs> I, is not overwhelmed. No, they're distracted. They just have a different set of priorities. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The priorities absolutely. is looking after those of them ourselves. Yeah. yeah, and they're not even doing a good job at that. Yeah, they're just you know because yeah. even if you look at the so-called uh, banana island, yeah. uh, Koi, it's still sinking. It's, it's not just sinking. These are glorified slums. It's still a slum because the, the, there's no infrastructure. There's Once it's drained, there's, drainage, drain, yeah. there's, there's flooding everywhere. It's a, we're not addressing a fundamental issue of how to build a society that's more inclusive, that accepts that they're going to be rich, yeah. the middle class, and the poor. Mm -hmm. And there should be a minimum standard of living. And that is the critical core that yeah. there's that absence. So it's like, let's just take you know, whatever we can for ourselves and whoever, you know, fight for yourself. And that's the madness that we, we, we're having in society. I mean, from my point of view, you know, I do a lot of work in the northern states and I go to places like Jaws, Kaduna, Kano and things like that. But what find, I find so amazing about those places is that they actually do not have low cost housing. So I'm asking myself, where are the low cost housing for these people? I mean, even when I go to Akwaibom, I go to Eket and things, there's no... Quite, you know, there's no 
no, um, you know, low cost housing. So, where do those poor people live? Nobody seems to be answering those questions. And when they do make homes, it tends to be yeah. for themselves. And those houses are left unoccupied? Most of the houses you find in, yeah. in Abuja, most of the houses, no, because they're hoping to there. get rent yeah. for it. Yeah. Yes, I, I think um, when the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Right Adequate Housing visited Nigeria, that was in September. And after her assessment, she found out that majority of housing estates in Lagos and Abuja are vacant, empty, unoccupied. And she recommended to the Nigerian government to impose a tax yes. on those buildings because you cannot Maybe have such a massive homelessness and inadequacy of shelter and at the same time have, you know, so many houses that are unoccupied. And, and they are unoccupied, they are vacant because they are un unaffordable. So all or nothing can be a good negotiation stand. After the break, Ekene is all for truth with a zero tolerance stance on fake news.